If you want to know how to migrate your Roblox game over to filtering enabled from a non-filtering enabled game, then watch this tutorial all the way until the end to make sure you understand exactly how to do it. Hello, Steady on here, um, and today's video is going to be on migrating your game, which is non-filtering enabled, over to filtering enabled. Um, and this is a very difficult process, and it's going to take a long time in most games, any game, any complex games. It really depends on how many scripts you have in your game. Um, so the main reasons you want to do this are because Roblox is soon going to be making non-filtering enabled games not available for people under the age of 13. Well, they're registered on age on Roblox. Um, and there's loads of other stuff they're going to be doing as well. Plus the fact that obviously filtering enabled makes your game a lot harder to exploit. Um, even though exploiting is quite a small problem on Roblox right now, um, if your game is not filtering enabled, that automatically makes it like quite a big target for exploiters to exploit. Um, so firstly, let's just start off by um, actually showing how to turn on filtering enabled. So I've got just a random place I've got here. Um, this doesn't really have very many uh, scripts in it, actually. It's just a sort of showcase thing I made. Uh, it was like a 30-minute challenge, so I made this in 30 minutes. Um, okay, so you're in studio. What you're going to do first is you're going to go to the Explorer panel, click Workspace, and down here you just want to click Filtering Enabled, click this box next to it. So once you've done this, when you test your game, you'll find a lot of things don't work. So what you're really want, want to, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to publish your game, and now you're going to want to actually play the game. So I think in this game there probably won't actually be anything that will be affected by filter enabled, but I'll show you how to find things that will be affected by it. So, hello, Stadion. I would recommend that you watch my video on um, how filter enabled works, which should be on a card on the top right of the screen right now. Um, and then using that, once you have an understanding of how it works properly, you should be able to figure out how to fix most things. It's very complicated if you want if you don't understand scripting yourself and you want to fix scripts, then you're going to have a very hard time doing that. So, if you don't understand how to script, um then the your only really your only option if you want to convert your place to filter enabled is you either restart your game, restart the whole game's development or you find new models for your game. So, you, you change your uh you change your game's um So you change the, the models uh, that you have in the game, so you find some models that work with filter enabled. Okay, so if I click play here, you can see play isn't working. Um, and that's probably something to do with filter enabled. So we're going to press F9 on our keyboard, and we're going to go to the server log here. Right, so we've got two errors. So these errors will display what's not working, and you, you're going to want to compare before you put filtering enabled on and after you put filtering enabled on to see what's been affected by filtering enabled. So in this, for, so for, right, for now, the play button isn't working, um, and that will probably be bleh, that will probably be because of a communication issue between the server and the client. And so if you've watched the video I uh, that should that should be in the top right of the screen a few minutes ago, then you'll understand what that means, right? So the stuff like this happens when. You've got a communication between the local side and the server side, but filtering enabled means that you can't actually communicate directly between the, the server side and the local side unless you use remote events and remote functions. There should be another tutorial on the top right of the screen right now on remote, re remote events and remote functions and how to use them in your game. Um, so if you understand how normal events work, you'll know that you can use events between a local script and just a normal script, and between any other script, right? In filtering enabled, if you have something in the workspace or in server script service, um, then you can't communicate directly using events or anything else uh, that we can't communicate between these scripts, anything in workspace or server script service, you can't communicate with scripts in starter GUI, the actual player, the local player, um, and there's a lot of other places you, can, you can't communicate with. So anything in workspace, lighting, Server script service or server storage, they are all server-sided things. Replicated storage is 
local and server side. It's the place where you communicate between the local side and the server side. So anything you put in replicated storage will be replicated, as in everything in the every local side script will be able to see everything in replicated storage. But if they edit what's in replicated storage, it won't copy what that edit to all the other players in the game, and it won't copy that edit to the server. So what that means is you can put stuff in here like values. So you could put, say, the current time or something. So you say you have a server script uh, that, that tells the time. Then in here, you can have a value called time. And then you, on the local scripts, you find this in replicated storage and you read that time value. But you can't actually have a value in, say, the workspace um, or in server storage or lighting or anything like that because those are all server-side things that the... Uh, local side can't access. So if you want to co uh, communicate or have anything accessible by a local script and a server script at the same time, then it has to be in replicated storage. So what this means is that if you have any kind of events in any of your scripts or if you have uh, values in any of your scripts that are read by the local side and they're in anything that's a server side service you need to move that, that you need to migrate that over to replicated storage replicated storage is kind of the heart of filtering enabled it's where all of the uh, communications between local side and server side happen so it's very important you put your, all of your events in here so you, so you need to make all your you need to change all your events either to remote events uh, or to remote functions and you need to move all of your values that are in the workspace or lighting or any other service that, that, are, that and it has to be a value that's accessed by both the local side and the server side. So any values that are accessed by both the local side and the server side all need to be put in replicated storage and you'll need to change the scripts to work with that too. So it's a very big thing to have to do but the reason Roblox is really doing it is because um, it secures the whole uh, Roblox game as a whole by a huge amount and obviously they've got all this stuff recently about keeping the new player uh, experience as streamlined as and as simple as possible so not only will this help the whole game of Roblox uh, as a whole but it will also help you in the fact that Roblox has said they'll push filtering enabled games higher up search results and they'll push uh, and, and they'll um, and also filtering enabled obviously is extremely helpful in stopping exploiters. Um, so even if you just do the simplest thing as you can possibly do to migrate your game over to filtering enabled, it will be way more secure than the original game. Um, obviously, filtering enabled is not something that will make your game unexploitable. That's, have, that's something you have to do yourself. So you still have to do things yourself to stop exploiting on your game, even if you have filtering enabled on. But there's not really any point in doing this unless you have a front page game or something that has, you know, thousands of players on at once. Um, because it's just not worth it. You won't get those, you won't get exploiters who are really looking for a, some kind of loophole in your game's security unless your game is really popular. Because then they can share it on online exploiting forums. Um, and yeah. So in other words, I would recommend not moving your game over to filtering enabled in the simplest way possible, but not trying really hard to make sure your game isn't ex isn't uh, ex uh, exploitable, because no one will really try too hard to exploit your game unless it's like a front page game. So, and the most important thing is just getting it over to filtering enabled, and then you can change stuff in the future. So I would say. Uh, the main things to do are to move all of your events in scripts over to remote events and remote functions. All of your values need to be in replicated storage if they're accessed by both the server and the local side, because otherwise they won't be accessible and you'll, it will throw up an error and you won't be able to use that uh, script anymore. So it's very important that you change your game to filter enabled because it's very clear uh, that Roblox in the future will be doing more and more stuff to make to move the whole in of Roblox as a whole over to filtering enabled um, because it's so, just so much of a better system uh, than uh, what, what, than non filtering enabled. Um, so it's very simple process. Well, actually, <laughs> it's very simple uh, once you get to understand how to do it. If your game has a lot of scripts in, though, it will be very uh, time consuming to move it all over but everything should run a lot faster um, and everything like that. There are a few problems though. 
Firstly, filter, uh, firstly, remote functions and remote events do cause slight lag because they have to communicate over, basically, in real life. They are actually communicating from your computer all the way to the nearest Roblox server. So that could be hundreds of miles away. Um, so there will be a lag of, say, you know, a millisecond or maybe two milliseconds or something like that. So you have to bear that in mind. I've never come, up, come across any problems with that, but you might come across problems with that. I've seen it on Roblox forums about how people have delays and it makes stuff go wrong with their game. Um, so always bear in mind the delays, uh, but for most games, as long as you're not some kind of front page game, you should be able to easily move a game over filtering enabled just by moving your events to remote events and remote functions and your values, putting those in, in replicated storage. So they're the, most, they're the two most important things to do. Um, and anything after that, as I said, you can look at the development console, look at the server log, and look at the errors and see what's wrong uh, with with your with your game. So hopefully this tutorial will help you. Uh, if you have any uh, issues, put them in the comments. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people will have a lot of issues. Um, uh, there's a very good and helpful article on the Roblox wiki on how to move your game mode filtering enabled. You can ask on the Roblox scripting forums as well, um, because it's going to be a very important thing to do in the future. In the very soon future, Roblox has actually issued a statement saying how important it is for filtering enabled to be on. Um, so hopefully this helped a lot, and thanks for watching.